It's Tommy Cooper! <laughs> Tonight at 10 on Plus, home of TV hits. You're watching Granada Plus, where great TV never goes out of fashion. Did you see the next range on it? Oh. Ah, uh, that's you, Angus. Hey, hey. You want me to examine you? Ah, uh, please, hey, hey, hey. Put your right leg up. Hey? Put your right leg up. Up where? Just up here. <laughs> Put your left leg up. <laughs> How long have you been having these dizzy spells? <laughs> Please, sir, not before me. I'm sorry, I didn't know it was your turn. <laughs> thank you, thank you kindly. Thank you tremendously. Good evening and... Welcome. <laughs> Good news, bad news, Joe. Bad news, yesterday Mr Harold Wilson swallowed his pipe. Good news, it was a light at the time. <laughs> I like that. We have news from America. 437 Ku Klux Klan men were found dead this morning. A man called Cohen sold them plastic bags for hoods. <laughs> and we've just, heard, we, we've just heard that the Pope, the Pope after hearing about the recent population explosion, has written a new book. It's called The Pills Grim Progress. <laughs> and now, let us pray. Let us pray for our good friend and neighbor, George Purvis, father of Teddy Purvis, Mabel Purvis, Betty Purvis, Anthony Purvis, Michael Purvis, Charlotte Purvis, Fiona Purvis, David Purvis, Sammy Purvis, <laughs> and Harold Ackroyd. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> well, friends, thank you tremendously. Thank you sincerely. Welcome to Opportunity Knocks. <clears throat> Pardon me, got a little frog in the throat. Now, uh, friends, let's find out who our first talent spotter is on the show here tonight. I want you to give him a nice big round of applause. He's 65 years young. <laughs> Just stand on the mark there, old son, so that Fair everybody enough, at home can see you, because we want them to see you. We really do. <laughs> now, tell me, what is your name, old son? Walt Brennan. I want to say it's a good darn dead burn Jim Denny pass the fun. Take, take a part and load of old cosplay. <laughs> now, friends, friends, while Uncle Bob Sharples is wiping his eye, I think we're all anxious to know who it is you brought along here to introduce to us on the show here tonight. Henry the Eighth. Henry the Eighth. <laughs> well, he's really tremendous, and we want to see him. <laughs> does he do? Tom Jones. <laughs> I saw the light on the night that I passed by a window. I saw the figure in shadows of love on her blind. She was my woman. As she seen me, I watched and went out of my mind. Shay. Mm hmm. I just shot two guys, a flat foot and a private eye. I got the eye in the foot and the foot in the eye. I'm telling them about uh, Lily and that fella that gave her that medicinal compound. She didn't 
didn't know what it was, did she? Till it was too late. <laughs> what happened was she used to go out with this fella and she fell madly in love with him and uh, she eventually had to go to the psychiatrist about it and he said that it was all in the mind. I'm seeing Walter. He told her it was only a pigment of her amalgamation, didn't he? <laughs> she used to go out with these lovely long dresses on and flowers all down the one side and she used to spray herself all over with that lovely new deodorant what you see on television it's called disappearing deodorant what you do is you spray yourself all over with it and then you disappear and then everybody in the room wonders where the smell's coming from <laughs> What they've done to our song, Mar. Mar. Look <laughs> what they've done to our song, Mar. It was the only thing I could do. I the right time this turning out all wrong, Mar. Oh, look what they've done. Thank you, thank you very much, thank you. <laughs> now, for my first trick tonight... Oh, what am I shouting for? I've got the job. <laughs> <laughs> for my first trick tonight, I need an assistant. Can I have a system, please? Any assistant, anywhere in the room. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Hello. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Just like I said, Thank you. Imagine why I'm so popular with the boys. Is it my lovely hair? No, no. My beautiful figure? Oh, I don't think so. No, no. My personality? No, 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 no. Then I give up. That's it. <laughs> Mr. Dave. Thank you. Good evening. <laughs> Little Irish fella, come out to England. <laughs> and he goes to confession one day. And he turned to the father, he said, Father, I have been with eight women in three days. <laughs> and the father said, my son, are you married? He said, Father, I'm not even Catholic, but I had to tell someone. <laughs> Little, little girl's getting married, and she's 18 years old, and she turns to her mother, she said, Mother, what color dress should I wear for the wedding? And her mother said, Well, darling, she said, if you have never sinned, you wear a white dress. And if you've sinned, you wear a blue dress. She said, Mother, I'm going to wear white. She said, Well done, darling. She said, With little blue spots just round the edges. <laughs> Dancing, and her shoulder strap broke. Did she blush? I don't know, I wasn't looking at her face. Hey! <laughs> Hello? Ayrton House, eh? Hello, Dr. Finlay. Aye, that poor old Mrs. McTavish at the door in an awful state, poor soul. Well, she said when she got up out of her bed this morning and put on her clothes, she couldn't move her legs at all, poor soul. No completely paralysed, Dr. Finlay. Oh, but her into the surgery and she's all right now. 
Uh -huh. Same as the last time, Dr. Finley. Both legs down the one knicker. <laughs> oh, lay, as they say to lazy hens in Spain. <laughs> I woke up this morning. I was set up in bed, oiling the bike. I thought, well, what a wonderful day. What a wonderful day for rushing up to the Egyptian embassy and shouting out, kosher. <laughs> Day for rushing up to Doctor Who and shouting out, Daleks! <laughs> well, I, come, I come from a very musical family, ladies and gentlemen. My dad, he's mad on Handel's Largo. Wouldn't drink anything else. <laughs> he wanted me to be a musician. He never says he wanted me to be a musician. He was always telling me to practice my electric guitar in the bath. And I... <laughs> oh, how shocking. Oh, did you know, interesting facts, did you know how porcupines make love? Very, very carefully. <laughs> did, did you know one woman in England gives birth to quads every four and a half minutes? We've got to find this woman and stop her. <laughs> <laughs> Is he a bird? Is he a plane? Is he... Uh, Brian Connolly, Saturday at 9 on Plus. We told our no-nonsense man, no smooth lifeguards. But would he listen? He spent ages looking for action. And he did lots of daring things in slow motion. But being a lifeguard can all get a bit too much. Especially if everyone you save falls in love with you. He knows now you don't need any heroic nonsense to sell John Smith's. Just a good look at the pint that is pure silk in a glass. Like this. Size 16 to 30. Be stylish. Be smart. Be confident. Be casual. Be dazzling. Be desirable. Be yourself. In sizes 16 to 30, simply be. For your free copy, call 0800 169 7913 now. Tina? be back tomorrow. Have you been wearing my perfume? Why? Is that the wine I was saving? Was it? Have you opened my gold blend? No, I can smell it. He's an aromatherapist. Who is? Hi. Nescafe Gold Blend. Release the golden aroma and enjoy. <laughs> Nescafe. This could mean days without heat. Endless phone calls, expensive repairs, or it could mean a single phone call to British Gas. Avoid the nightmare of a heating breakdown with British Gas Central Heating Cover. Call 0845 609 4000 now. Tick, tick it all night long. <laughs> Some cheese. Uh. Hail and pay Saturday at 9.30 on Plus. Governor of this place is the meanest, nastiest governor of any prison in the world. Who else would put a drawing pin on the electric chair? <laughs> a great favourite of mine, I'm sure. You must know the gentleman from television. Up in Scotland with a very peculiar sense of humour, Mr. Chick Murray. He came home from a party, feeling quite hearty, but his wife had something to say. He said, I've only had medicinal compound. He tells this story in this way. Well, actually, when I came home that night, it was a bit embarrassing. The wife was waiting up for me in the bedroom, and uh, she was sitting up in bed, and I said to her, uh, I said, hello, dear. I called her dear because she had two horns sticking out of the top of her head. <laughs> <laughs> I think the snow had driven her down from the hills. <laughs> She was very decent about it, and uh, she looked into my face and she said, uh, Oh, hello, chick, it's you. I knew it was me because I was standing there at the town. <laughs> I could remember perfectly well getting up in the morning. I think it's a good thing to get up in the morning because it leaves you the rest of the day to yourself. 
Hello, I'm Johnny Cash. Hey! How do you do? San Quentin, I hate every inch of you. Rackle Welsh, I love every inch. <laughs> what they've done to my voice. Oh. Look what they've done to my voice. Oh. They picked a song that's a bit too low, and I can't get so deep. Look what they've done <laughs> in my old man weaver <laughs> song. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you a story. A fella buys a racehorse. Just before the race, he goes over the horse, puts his hand in his pocket, gives the horse a lump of sugar. The Duke of Norfolk comes over. He said, what's that? He says, sugar. He said, are you sure? He said, yes, here, have a piece. Gives the Duke of Norfolk a piece. He said, we have to be careful. Now the owner goes over to the jockey to give him his instructions. He said, I'll tell you how to run the race. First half mile, hold him back. Last four furlongs, give him his head, let him go. And if anything passes you, don't worry, it'll be me and the Duke of Norfolk. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, here's a story. Golda Mayer phoned up President Nixon. She said, here, give me two American generals. I'll have the war in Vietnam over in two days. He said, certainly, which two do you want? She said, General Electric and General Motors. Ladies <laughs> <laughs> and gentlemen, we have... Uh... Rocky Gazlano here, right here. Rocky Gazlano right here. Like Jimmy Foy goes in the ring. Here at Madison Square, Square Garden. Now we're gonna, we're gonna ask a few questions to Rocky Gazlano. Ladies and gentlemen. Rocky? What's my name? Rocky, how many fights do you have? Um, I have 336. 336? Mm-hmm. How many were lost? 336. <laughs> How come? Well, you can't win them all. <laughs> now, listen, Miss Munro, dear. I wonder, would you pose in the nude for me? Well, I'm not really a model. Oh, that's all right. I'm not really an artist. <laughs> Where's my ball? <laughs> you know, ladies and gentlemen, this is a genuine Stradivarius. And if it's not, I've been done for ten dollars. <laughs> you know what I like about you, baby? Me and you, we're two of a kind. Yeah. I know what you mean, you dirty rat, you. That's good, keep it in. <laughs> <laughs> you know I can't go back, sitting on my own. If you think I'm wrong, well, baby's with his telephone, I don't need you. Tell me the name of thy lovers or thy head shall roll. But I've told you before, I have no other lovers. Oh no? Who was that last night I saw you with this morning? <laughs> Bum -bum. <laughs> Hello, Clark. Arthur Askey, comedian. <laughs> Some droll things do happen to you when you're a jester. I met that Germaine Greer the other day, you know, that woman's lib lady. I hope she took her bra off before she burned it. <laughs> anyway, what a woman. Six foot four, soaking wet. 
Well, we, <laughs> no, we met at a party and I'd had a couple of Ibenas and I went up to her and I said, ah, I said, good evening, Miss Greer. I said, I'd like to make love to you. And she looked down at me. She said, if you do and I ever get to hear about it, there'll be trouble. I said, <laughs> Oh, I'm feeling ever so depressed. Do you ever feel like that? <laughs> My husband's left me again. He keeps running away. Isn't he a funny fellow, you know? This time I went to the police station about it, actually, and I said, do you think you can get him back for me? And this nice young sergeant, he said, well, you know, it's rather difficult. Can you can describe him. And I said, well, he's a sort of tall, handsome fellow with broad shoulders, sort of like Rock Hudson, really, and blue eyes like Paul Newman, and oh, his hair sort of like... Robert Redford, really. Do you think you could get him back for me? And he said, oh, wait a minute. He said, you're Mrs. Brown from Lima Avenue, aren't you? He says, I know your husband. He's a little short, fat fellow with the bald head. <laughs> I said, I know he is, but who the hell wants him back? <laughs> Speaking to you now from the heart of the <laughs> African. <laughs> I'm about to interview this gentleman. None other than the immortal ape man, Tarzan. <laughs> now tell me, Tarzan, I understand that you've just taken out a very famous woman on safari. That's right, love. <laughs> Gladys Feversham. Lovely girl. Really? She shot 12 lions. Goodness. Three leopards and one rhino. You mean you took Gladys, Lady Gladys Feversham out and she shot all those animals? <laughs> yes, she did. Quite a bag. Oh, you know her then? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, good evening and welcome. <laughs> Tonight I'm absolutely delighted to have with me in the studio a brilliant lady scientist who's invented a super new love potion. Dr. Field, is it true? that your love potion actually contains oysters, powdered rhinoceros horn, Spanish fly, gin, brandy, vodka, scotch and rum. That's right, love. It's the biggest apprentice I can know. All right, Fagan. Fagan! What is it, Bill? What is it? Tell me, has Nancy been unfaithful to me? <laughs> with, with only four men, but to you, three. <laughs> I don't know how many times, Sooty, have I told you not to be naughty? <laughs> I don't know. Just come here. Come on. Sooty, you're nude! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, thank you viewers. Well, it's wonderful because they've asked the old JT on the show to come and do a few bubums for you, a couple of zippo bangs. And I've just come back from Israel. I've been trying to raise money for England. And... Because <laughs> they're having a hard time over there. I went on one of these Israeli airlines and on these Israeli airlines, they don't have air hostesses. They have a little woman pushing a trolley around saying, go on, son, eat it up, it'll do you good. <laughs> and it was a very old plane, it had outside toilets and... <laughs> Come on, folks, these are the jokes. <laughs> Water in, and it took off from a kneeling position. And we were up there, and the boys took over the intercom, and it said, well, he said, we are going to be flying at 200,000 feet. And I said, oh, my God. And a voice said, yes. <laughs> Arthur.